Hi, so in this video we'll just do um, putting the crosshair in the middle of the screen which is going to help us a lot when we come to snapping things together and we may as well sort out the materials like the wood for the floor, bricks for the walls uh, while we're at it. So first thing you're going to want to do is get hold of an image file with a crosshair on it, ideally on a transparent background and just drag and drop that image file into the um, content browser like this. Now it may look as though it's messed it up like mine has here but if you double click you'll find this is the kind of image you want just like transparent png file with just some lines drawn on you can make it in paint very quickly if you want to and then what we need to do is create a ui widget which just puts this image in the dead center of the screen so right click in the content browser user interface widget blueprint and call this ui underscore crosshair and then open this up okay so all we want to do is put I don't know whether you've used the UI thing before, but basically you've got all of the things that you can have on your UI here in Palette, and then all of the things that you have added down here in Hierarchy. And at the moment, all we've got is Canvas Panel. So what we want to do is find Image in Palette, drag that into Canvas Panel, and now that you'll see it's tried to put like an image at the top. If you select Image, you'll see this like um, flower thing. That's the anchor point at the moment. It's anchored to the top left of the screen. That's not what we want. So over here on the um, right, change the anchor point to be center so now the position of our image will be measured relative to the center of the screen also in over here on the right in details uh, we'll have the size uh, so size x 100 that's okay size y 100 and then in terms of where this is placed remember we're measuring from the center so if we say it's at minus 50 position x minus 50 position y it's now basically in the center of the screen now, in terms of saying which image we want, that's this area over here. So you've got um, appearance, then brush, and if you've got your crosshair actually selected in the content browser, you can just press this little arrow here and it will push that in. Okay, compile that, save, and there we are. That's so. This is our UI. It's just that image in the middle. What we need to do now is tell Unreal to actually create. Look, it won't automatically put that there. We need to tell it to. Now, since we've been cramming everything into the player controller so far, which is not always the best idea, I'm just doing it because it's convenient, we may as well carry on and do that here. So in the event graph on player controller, find event begin play. Event begin play, if you don't know, is a function that is automatically called whenever an instance of this blueprint is created. So basically, when the game starts, this player controller gets uh, created, so this will run. So in here, we can say create widget, <clears throat> and then which widget do we want to create is what's in this select class well uh, there's our ui crosshair and then all that's done is it's basically made an object of this class but it hasn't actually added it to the screen so you then need to say once you've finished doing that do an add to viewport and that will put the crosshair on the screen so if you play the game now see we've got the crosshair in the middle so if, in fact if i go to create a floor you can see how that works the line trace that we did basically is firing from the camera straight through that crosshair so you can see a little more clearly now how that's working and with walls it's like this okay so let's come out of there um the next thing we want to do is sort out the materials so for the materials we'll start by creating a new folder called materials then what we're going to do in here is create one material which has um, some parameters in and then two material instances which can change those parameters to make it look like wood or brick or whatever we want so in the materials folder right click new material and call this um, something like base build material and then in here stop that we need to set up things to say like what color is this material how metallic how rough all that kind of thing now you may have used this before and you, you're used to just putting like um, texture samplers into into say um, base color uh, floats and things into here another texture sample into normal map we're going to do a similar thing but we want them to be parameters so right click texture sample now make sure it's not texture sample that you add but texture sample parameter 2d the one underneath what this does it works very much the same but we get to give this parameter a name so we can call this someone like uh, something like texture and then we can change this later on through material instances or even blueprint uh, that's not a very good preview material is it so um with that still selected 
down here in the texture drop down let's go for the cobble one cobblestone there it is so it'll be cobblestone pebble underscore d the underscore d is for diffuse map so color map and a sphere is not the best thing for this so let's change the preview here uh to a cube there that's a little bit better the one thing we want our material to be able to do is tint the object that we're placing a given color so you've got all the other objects we've built wall floors the one that's currently being traced for its position will be highlighted somehow like a slightly different tint to it so how we're going to do that is add a vector parameter <coughs> and what this will be as you can see over here if you um have your vector parameter selected you've got well we'll give it a name first of all we'll call it tint and then under this bit material expression vector parameter you've got red green blue alpha to say what color it is so just to show you what this does if i put red to one leave everything else on zero then multiply these two together and use that as the color you'll get a red tinted texture so uh, from here multiply these two and put that in there and you'll see what i mean see so what we're going to do when we want to um tint the part that we're currently placing we'll make it like some bluish green color so it stands out in fact i think if you watch the first video in this series the preview that i showed you of what we're going to do was basically doing that if you just want the color of the texture you can set the red green and blue here to one so red one green one blue one and it's basically as though you've just got the texture well, we may as well get this to look a little prettier. So at the moment, you'll see this is just a completely flat image. It doesn't look like there's no sort of 3Dness to it. So we'll sort this out using a normal map. So add another texture sample parameter. Texture sample parameter 2D. Give this one the name uh, normal. And within the starter content, there'll be a normal map which corresponds to this cobblestone texture. So select this. Go to your texture drop down cobble and it'll be um cobblestone whatever underscore n wire this into here and see it starts to get more of a sort of 3d appearance to it like as though there is some like depth to it even though that's just, that's really just a lighting trick i mean this becomes more if you move the light around so hold l and click and drag to move the light around you can see it kind of it starts faking a sort of Okay, um, what else shall we do? There's a couple of other parameters. We don't really need to do this, but while we're here, we may as well. That's metallic, specular, and roughness. So if we add a scalar parameter, a scalar parameter is just a, a single number. So if we put that in here, metallic, we'll call this parameter metallic. And if you play with the value of that, say going between 0 and 1, it, it will look weird on that texture, but put metallic of 1, they start to get a very shiny metallic like appearance um if you start to drop that so anywhere between zero oh, if you go over one i'm not sure where it does not much so between zero and one like how metallic looking is that supposed to be um the same thing for specular so let's add another scalar parameter and we'll call this one specular this will basically say how sort of sh not exactly how shiny something is but how tight the specular highlight should be on it uh, roughness we'll add another one so scalar parameter again call that roughness and wire this into here and and again you can play with the value of that between zero and one to see what it will do so if you've got you, again you may not do much to that texture Yeah, to be honest, we'll leave it. So if we leave all three of those on zero, <clears throat> okay, um, that's pretty much all we want to set up in here. And then what we'll do, we'll use the material to create two material instances, uh, wood and um, bricks to put on the walls and floors, and then we'll use blueprint to drive this tint variable. So save. So back in here, right click on where to got base build material and you've got create material instance. Now what this does, and we'll call this one something like um, build wood. If you open that, you'll see what you get. Let's change this to something else. 
is all of our parameters are listed here on the left and we can change all of them. So we want this to be a wood material. So the texture and the normal map will need changing to um, something wood. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So in texture, if I just search wood, um, wood pine underscore D, let's go with that. Now, you see what we're doing here? We're using a pine texture, but we're still using the normal map from the cobblestones, which is why it looks like this. What we're going to need to do is find the normal map that corresponds to the pine. So that would be this one. It, it probably doesn't do much, actually. The pine's quite you know, smooth. These three, so metallic, roughness, and specular. It doesn't really matter what we do with this. I mean, if we make it... So you can see the effect of changing specular there, if I can just get the light right. So specular of one is going to give us a very sort of polished, shiny floor. Specular of zero, very dull. So you can leave this however you want. I'll put my you know, point 0.3, something in between. Maybe if I get a cube preview, that will be easier to see what that's doing. Yeah. Um, metallic and roughness. Um, roughness might could we go enough actually? No. I'll leave that on. I'll leave. I'll leave roughness and specular on point 0.3, metallic as it is. And uh, this one is done. So save that. Go back to the main editor, right click on our base material again, create material instance, and this time we'll call it build brick. Basically a similar procedure now, we come back into here and just change all of this to give us a nice brick appearance. So texture and normal map. Let's have a look what we've got. Brick cut stone, brick hewn, brick clay, clay beveled. Um, We'll go with brick clay. So the texture is going to be the diffuse map. So brick clay underscore D. The normal map is going to want to be the corresponding one. So brick clay new underscore N. There we go. And then you can do the same thing here with specular, metallic, and all the rest of it. So let's make a on the wall. It's not a metal wall, but if you give it like if you put some metallic on it, you get that nice kind of shine to it. In fact, that might be a bit much. Let's turn that down a bit. Roughness can go up quite high. And it doesn't need to be much in specular, just a little bit. Okay, that'll do. So again, save. And that's both of our materials now set up. Close all this. So what we want to do now is assign these materials to our, um, uh, our build stuff. So go into the building folder. Find your build floor. If this comes up and it doesn't give you the choice to go to the viewport, just press this open full blueprint editor here and it will go over to this. The reason why it did that is because we haven't put anything in the event graph, so it assumes we're not going to, but I want to be able to see this thing here. So we want the full editor for this. Select your mesh, and then underneath where you said that the mesh, the mesh itself was floor 400, 400, there's a drop down where you can say what material does it want to use. And you're going to, you want to find that build wood that you made. That's that. So save, uh, similar thing, go back to here, go into your build wall, open full editor, go to the viewport, select the mesh, and then in the same drop down, say we're using build brick. Okay, that's quite small bricks. We can actually sort that out. If we, um, so the way that you would scale it up so those bricks look bigger is in something called, using something called texture coordinates. The way we would do this, if you go back into uh, your base material, so materials, base material, here, we could plug something into both these UV pins on the texture and the normal app to kind of scale them, something called the texture coordinate. So if you right click here, go texture coordinate. Now there's no texture coordinate parameter that we could um, use, so what we're going to have to do is create another scalar parameter. Remember scalars are just single numbers. Um, set that to one. Give this a name, something like um, scale. Actually, no, that wouldn't be a good name. So coordinate scale. Then what you can do is multiply those two together. And what we can do, because the scalar that we're multiplying by is itself a parameter, changing that will change how the texture coordinates are working. So if we wire that into there and there, I'll try and show you what I mean on this preview. So if I change that coordinate scale to 2, see, you're fitting like 12, or 5 to make 
you're changing how it scales. So that's now tiled five times going across. One will be as it was before. Numbers less than one will basically like blow the texture up if you if you know what I mean. So what we'll do here, save that now. And then both of your material instances will now have access to that scale parameter. So for the wood, you don't really want to mess with that. That's fine how it is. For the brick wall, go into uh, coordinate scale. A point two five. That's going to be like quite big bricks, like that. Save, and then the wall should. Yeah, that's better. That's that's more what I was after. Really, quite big bricks. Um, we'll give this a quick test, and that's all we need to do in in this video. We'll do snapping next. Yeah. So floors have the um, wood material on, and walls have this brickwork material on. Now, the one thing it occurs to me we do need to do is change it so that the one we're currently placing is highlighted. Is tinted so let's get out of this go back to the player controller so when we spawn an item in the first place in spawn build item after we've set the collision to be off on the mesh we want to change the tint parameter to um, something else so you want set vector material uh, set vector parameter on material and you'll need to say what's the parameter called and what do you want to set it to so we called it tint and if you imagine x, y, and z correspond to RGB, so I'm going to set it to 5y, 5z, which should be enough of a tint that will overpower most materials to give them like a, a similar look. And when that's done, back in event graph, over here, we need, kind of need to do the opposite. So after we've set the collision back on, on the same mesh, do a set vector material, a set vector parameter on material, and do exactly the same thing, but not with the same value. If you remember I said, if you want to turn tint, if you want to turn something so it's just using the texture and not any tint at all, you put 111 for the tint, and then it will do it. So let's try this. Yeah, so the thing I'm currently placing is, has this quite strong highlight on it due to that tint. Walls, yep, that works as well. Uh, notice how the line trace is allowed to hit the walls, so it will let you do, because we're not snapping at the moment, it will let us do weird things like this. It isn't necessarily what we want. And uh, that will be it for this video. So next video, uh, we'll get on to snapping.